Good morning. morning. Shall we try that one more time? Good morning. morning. It is great to see everyone. Welcome to St. James Episcopal Church in Skinny Atlas, New York. We are live streaming this morning, so a special welcome to those of you who are worshiping online with us. We have a guest preacher this morning. It is just a delight for me to be able to introduce to you the Reverend Dr. Brian Conkle, who is the Dean of Hendricks Chapel at uh, Syracuse University, as well as the Professor of Practice in the Department of Religion. And he is an ordained pastor in the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, and therefore Uh, a brother of ours. We are in full communion with the Lutheran Church, and it is just a delight to have him here. He has a story for us and a word that God has put on his heart for this morning, and you will be blessed. So uh, I do, for those of you who are online, we do have a bulletin that is on St. James' website at stjamesscan.org, and the easiest way to access that is by clicking on the first banner heading and it will take you right there, but nearly all of the service is also available on the screens, and so you will see that right in front of you. And I invite you now to stand and let us raise our voices in song as we worship God. upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Once upon a time, people used to believe that uh, God just lived on a mountain, but of course we know that God is all around us. He's there to help us now in our lives, and even when we don't always succeed, and gives us a second chance.
Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Mercy endures forever. Hear the commandments of God to, God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Receive and move our hearts to keep this law. You shall not make for yourself any graven image or the likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the waters under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor worship them. Lord, have mercy on us and move our hearts to keep this law. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Lord, have mercy on us and move our hearts to keep this law. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Lord, have mercy on us and move our hearts to keep this law. Honor your father and your mother. Lord, have mercy on us and move our hearts to keep this law. You shall not commit murder. Lord, have mercy on us and move our hearts to keep this law. You shall not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy on us and move our hearts to keep this law. You shall not steal. Lord, have mercy on us and move our hearts to keep this law. You shall not be a false witness against your neighbor. Lord, have mercy on us and move your hearts to keep this law. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Lord, have mercy on us and write all these laws on our hearts. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may de be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. In this reading, God reveals himself as he calls his servant Moses. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush he looked, and the bush was blazing, yet not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to Moses out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am, Lord. Then God said, come no closer. 
Remove the sandals from your feet, for this place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters, and indeed, I know their sufferings. I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians, to bring them up out of that land to a good and a broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I will be with you. And this shall be a sign to you. This is the sign that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this very mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is, your, what is his name? What shall I say to them, Lord? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations, the word of the Lord. Let's re read Psalm 63, verses 1 to 8, responsively by, half, by whole verse. O God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a barren and dry land where there is no water. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content, as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. For you have been my helper, Lord, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul sings to you, your right hand holds me fast. From the of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. At that very time there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you. 
but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise. Please be seated. Some of you will know that we have uh, some great connections with Syracuse University. A number of faculty and students have worshiped in uh, this parish over time. And in recent years, we have enjoyed a new friendship and relationship that has begun to develop, and that is with uh, Brian Conkle, who is the Dean of Hendricks Chapel. Uh, some of you will have had the, the great joy of being here in January when Terrence King preached uh, from Terrence from Ithaca. And his name was given to us by Brian, and so that's just a, another wonderful connection that we have so appreciated. And Brian has been encouraging us and, and providing resources for the Racial Justice and Reconciliation Commission as well as we have developed our schedule of events and study uh, for this year that is called Opening Curious. And so uh, just deeply grateful for, for um, Brian's presence, but also for your presence this morning. It has just been Wonderful to uh, meet you in person finally after all this time and um, to grab a little bit of opportunity to talk in between services and I trust that this will be a long and fruitful relationship but thank you for preaching this morning. Good morning everybody. Growing up in small town central Wisconsin, I would get awoken by my mother Judy, by something I now call the liturgy of Judy. She would walk into our room, my brother and I shared bunk beds, and she would start singing, I'm alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic. And of course I would say, Mom, we're Lutheran, we're not supposed to be enthusiastic, but nevertheless, I'm alive, I'm awake, I'm alert. And I'm enthusiastic, and to this I say, thanks be to God. It is so good to finally be with you in person. We are real-life human beings, not just on Zoom screens. And thank you for this opportunity to be with you. I am certainly feeling alive, awake, alert, and enthusiastic with you all this morning. The title of my sermon today is The Power and Possibility of of receiving another chance. The power and the possibility of receiving another chance. There was a young man named Randy who grew up in a normal household. Many would say a typical American upbringing until he was impacted by news that the United States would get involved in the Vietnam War. They say that crisis can give birth to clarity, and for Randy, that clarity was, for him, a sense of wanting to serve his country. And so Randy enlisted in the United States military, and before you know it, Randy is fighting in Vietnam. And as is the case for so many, Randy begins to see and experience things that no human being should ever 
have to see or experience. War. Death. Suffering. Randy serves in Vietnam for several years, and upon return to the United States, Randy struggles as many do tend to struggle after seeing and experiencing things that no human being should ever have to see or experience. Randy suffers from anxiety, depression, isolation. He begins to cope with alcohol and drugs, more alcohol, more drugs, and he starts spiraling. Randy spirals to the point where he overdoses on cocaine, finds himself in the back of an ambulance on the way to the emergency room. And upon arrival, Randy's heart stops beating. And through the miracles of modern medicine, Randy is revived. And he is given another chance. Randy leaves that hospital that day reflecting upon the responsibility and the opportunity that comes as a result of receiving another chance. He invests in a small business. That small business becomes a average-sized business. That average-sized business becomes a above-average-sized business, and it becomes a very large business. And before you know it, Randy's doing really, really, really well. Randy finds a wonderful spouse. They have two children and one could say that Randy is thriving. Until all of a sudden that booming stock market is booming downward and that large business turns into a medium-sized business and turns into a small business and then all of a sudden turns into a no business. Randy, once again, is having challenges, struggling with the stressors of responsibility, of all things coming, crashing down. Randy, once again, spirals into anxiety, depression, isolation. Once again, starts struggling with alcohol and drugs. His wife leaves him. His children leave him. And for a second time, Randy overdoses. And for a second time, Randy is rushed to the emergency room. And for a second time, his heart stops beating. And for a second time, he is brought back to life. Another chance. At this point, Randy's not sure where to go. He's not sure what to do. And after several weeks, he wanders into a local congregation just begging and pleading to do something to pick up a little bit of pocket change to get by. Randy wanders in, and the local pastor says, well, actually, we've been looking for someone to clean up around the facility every once in a while. Why don't you come by every few days? We'll give you something to do, and we'll compensate you fairly for that labor. Randy jumps at the opportunity, and he starts cleaning up around the church. And as you can imagine, churches tend to be filled with curious people. I don't know if that's the case here, but uh, people start wondering who's this new person lingering around the congregation. 
Randy was not born with a, a filter, so when people ask him about his life story, he actually tells them his life story. And as you can imagine, people are enthralled as they start listening about Vietnam, about drugs, about alcohol, about being in the back of an ambulance twice. The word gets out and all of a sudden a few teenagers ask him, say, Randy, can you come and speak to our youth group? This is an amazing story. And despite the reservations of their parents, <laughs> Randy comes in, speaks with these young people, tells them about his story, about receiving chance after chance, and about making the most of their lives. And these young people were just taken aback by Randy's authenticity. No self-righteousness. This real and this raw story about the ways in which God has been active in and through Randy's life. And so, of course, the word continues to spread. And as this youth group is telling everybody about Randy, then, of course, the men group invites Randy. Then, of course, the women's group invites Randy. Until finally, one Sunday morning, the pastor finally says, Randy, perhaps it's time for you to give your story from the pulpit on a Sunday morning. And of course, Randy says, God, no. <laughs> the pulpit will be set on fire as soon as I stand in it, and the, the holy water is going to boil or something, given that all the mistakes that I've done in my life. The pastor persisted. Randy finally agreed. And just a few weeks later, Randy rises to the pulpit of that congregation and he shares his story. Authentic, real, raw. And about the blessing of receiving another chance. Several weeks later, Randy's pastor asked Randy if he ever considered being a pastor himself. <laughs> I would give you Randy's response, but I'm told this is being recorded, so I'm not giving you the... One of the greatest barriers that people have to finding their ways into faith communities is this idea that people of faith sometimes carry an air of self-righteousness. Randy had no such thing. He knew what it was like to be at the bottom of the barrel. He knew what it was like to receive the amazing grace of God. So after much prayer, after much discernment, Randy did enroll at Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota. He began classes in late May of 2001. And on his very first day of class, he sat next to me. So let's paint a picture for you for a moment here. Randy is about five foot six to five foot eight. Randy's about 300 pounds. Randy is covered with tattoos from his hands to his ankles. Randy's got about four or five earrings in both ears. He's got a large gray beard, shaved bald head, and he loves to wear sleeveless leather vests. I looked over and said, hey, man, I think you're lost. <laughs> I was 22 years old. I looked 12. Grew up in small town, central Wisconsin, and I'm sitting next to Randy. He looked over at me, and he said, Sonny, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. 
And in that moment, I knew I was too. Randy continues to serve faithfully as a minister of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America on the West Coast. Continues to reach people in ways that many of us never could. He has lived the gospel. And he has been on the receiving end of amazing grace. And he knows firsthand the power and the possibility of receiving another chance. When I was coming here, I read that 13th chapter of Luke's gospel. And I knew immediately I had to tell you Randy's story. I read this text and I go to the verse where it says, cut it down, that fig tree that bears no fruit. And I imagine that there was many in Randy's life that thought it was time for him to be cut down. I imagine that many of you have felt that in your own lives where people have doubted you and people have wanted to cut you down. But I also imagine that you've received the opportunities like the end of this text that when you receive some fertilizer, when you're in the right soil, that something beautiful, the fruits of the Spirit, if you will, can emerge. And as I think about what this looks like, I think about something that we talk about at Syracuse University. About how it is that we give our students another chance. A chance to grow, a chance to flourish, a chance to thrive. And I'm going to give you three B words that have been important to me throughout my time at Syracuse that I'm reminded of this morning. The first is belonging. When Randy walked into that congregation that day, he received a sense of belonging, recognizing that isolation can be incarceration. Randy came into that congregation despite all of his shortcomings, despite all of his mistakes. He received a sense of belonging. People welcomed him just the way that he was. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Whether it's students at the university, whether it's faith communities such as this, when we receive a sense of belonging, a true sense of welcome, not toleration, even beyond acceptance, but belonging. That blessing. The second word is the word becoming. That as you belong, you become. There's this sense that as you are welcome, that just as you are, you cannot stay as you are. Or I tell our students at Syracuse, if you are the exact same person on your first day of class as you are the last day of class, ask for your money back. <laughs> and now I'm realizing that you are recording this. I probably should. <laughs> I'm going to get a call tomorrow. We are becoming. We are changing. We are growing. We are learning. We are being pushed, prodded, tested. When I think about Randy's story, there was a recognition that he was not a finished product, but he was on a journey. And once he was given a sense of belonging, it sparked his becoming. And the same is true for you, the same is true for me. The third is bestowing. That as we belong, as we become, then we bestow. I tell our students at the university, your diploma might have your name on it, but you are not the only person that earned it. And you are certainly not the only person that should benefit from it. The purpose of that diploma is to be a blessing upon the world. To bestow something righteous, something good, something real. When I think about Randy's story, when I think about the gospel story, when I think about your story, and when I think about 
my story. There is a blessing when we belong. There is a blessing when we can become. And there's a blessing when we can bestow. Why? Because there's power and there's possibility when you and I are given another chance. Your story might not be as dramatic as Randy's story. But I would argue that your story is the story of receiving another chance. And so I can come here today and I can say, I am alive. I am awake. I am alert. And I'm enthusiastic. Because I've been given another chance. And I hope that you can feel alive, that you can feel awake, that you can feel alert, and you can feel enthusiastic because you're here because someone else gave you another chance. And I say thanks be to God because tomorrow you and I will have an opportunity to give someone else another chance. And to that I say thanks be to God. Amen. What a wondrous and forgiving God we have. The God who Moses met face to face and clearly Randy met also. The God who gives us multiple chances. And this is the God who we believe in. Let's stand again and recite once again the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only God, the only God, the Father, God of the God, Christ the Lord, true God. Let us return with all our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord Christ, we pray for your church around the globe, for our neighbors and other faith communities, and for all who long to hear your voice. In this diocese, we pray for our bishop, the Right Reverend Dr. Dee Dee Duncan Proby, and the people of Trinity Episcopal Church in Fayetteville, and their priest, the Reverend, very Reverend Dr. Rene Trembeckian. We also pray for the people of All Saints Episcopal Church in Fulton, and their priest, the Reverend Dr. Leon Moseliak, Jr. In our companion diocese of El Salvador, we pray for the memory of Archbishop Oscar Romero and the martyrs of El Salvador. In the Episcopal Church, we pray for our presiding bishop, the Most Reverend Michael Curry, and the people of the Diocese of Southern Ohio, and their bishop provisional, the Right Reverend George Wayne Smith. In the Anglican community, we pray for the people of La Iglesia Anglicana de Mexico, 
and their acting prime bishop, the Right Reverend Enrique Torino Cruz. In your mercy, Lord, We pray that in the wilderness of the world, the church may be the rock of God, providing the waters of life to all who thirst. In your mercy, Lord. That all people will tend to the healing of your creation, so the whole earth provides abundantly for generations to come. In your mercy, Lord. That those who control worldly power and shape and shape human wisdom may attend to the law of God and respond to the needs of the lowly. In your mercy, Lord. Your your the nations share resources of food and medicine and knowledge, and so transform the earth from a battlefield into a garden of peace. In your mercy, Lord. Your your that those who face insult or degradation because of race religious belief, sexual orientation, or political conviction may be supported by disciples of the Lord. In your mercy, Lord. Your that those who are struggling with illness or addiction or are homebound or facing surgery may find you to be a source of healing and strength, especially we name those either silently or aloud. I pray this morning for Dave Palin, who will be having knee surgery this week, and for all those on our hearts. In your mercy, Lord. Hear our sadly prayer. That the departed who have gone to their rest may hear the voice of Jesus calling them forth to life and resurrection especially those we now name silently or aloud. Eugene. In your mercy, Lord. Hear us as we pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Please do turn and greet one another with the love of Christ. Good morning again. Uh, again, a warm thank you to Brian Conkle for uh, your presence here this morning, for opening God's word to us. And uh, th- this is actually the beginning of Brian's day. His, his services at Hendricks Chapel start at 4 o'clock this afternoon. So whereas Chuck and I are going to go home and take a nap. <laughs> So I invite your continued prayers for Brian as he moves into the rest of his day. We do have a number of resources for you for the Lenten season. And just remind you that a new edition of the Take Home Devotional is available on the welcome tables at both doors. We have Lenten daily prayers every weekday at 5.30 on Zoom. And the link for that is on St. James Website, uh, the banner heading at the top, if you click on that uh, at about 525 any weekday, it'll take you right um, to a place where you can see the Zoom link. And just want to say that these uh, services are brief and they are led by various members of the congregation who share a, a devotional of their choosing. And they have just been incredibly rich and meaningful at the close of each day. So if you have an opportunity to participate, I would encourage you to do so. 
And just a reminder that around the nave, we have Stations of the Cross by artist Janet McKenzie and a devotional that is, uh, accompanies these paintings that is written by Sister Joan Titister. And you are welcome to come into the building anytime that it's open, which uh, weekdays from 8 to probably, oh, 5 o'clock, um, and on Sundays as well. And just take your time and read and pray and look at the paintings and allow that to be a time of quiet and worship and nourishment for you. I invite Kip Kerper to come and speak to us about um, St. James Creation Care Ministry. Good morning. Did you all know that uh, the summer of 2021 was the hottest year on 126 years of record keeping in the United States? And that the number of natural disasters driven by climate change has increased by a factor of five over the past 50 years. Many of us are concerned that our grandchildren and their grandchildren may experience climate calamity. A place we can try to make a difference is to take responsibility for the resources that are being depleted and the atmosphere and waterways that are being polluted. Another way to preserve God's abundant creation is for us everyday people to make our voices heard by corporate leaders and politicians who can make a big change occur, as well as by changing light bulbs and considering buying electric vehicles. But one way your voice can be heard is by joining St. James Environmental Ministry Creation Care. Chris and Barbara Baker, who are sitting right up here, and myself are looking for a few people to form a small group that will meet once a month to plan ways we can get involved and encourage others to get involved with climate justice. If you do not have time for that commitment, you can instead add your name to an email list of people who get climate action updates from me several times a month. These messages share good news of climate actions around the world, petitions to sign, and opportunities to get involved in periodic projects. The two sign-up lists will be on the radiator right down there on a clipboard. And um, if you are interested, uh, please come down after the service and sign those. I will be down there for, to answer any questions. If you are online, please share your desire to get involved in the chat and or contact me at kip at stjamesscan.org. I hope you'll consider getting more involved in caring for our beautiful creation that God so abundantly gave us. Thank you, Kip. I am aware of a few birthdays this week. Zach Eccles, Nicole Bova, Colleen Gannon, Bob Stenhouse, and Dick Perkins. Are there others? Roxanne, did you have a birthday this week? Tomorrow. All right. Well, you are in the right place to get a birthday blessing. If And who? You have a birthday? I, I forgot when you were talking about it at the previous service, but yes. <laughs> what day is your birthday? The 25th. The 25th. Well, how about that? You would think I would know that. <laughs> I didn't know. It's my birthday. <laughs> well, there, there you go. Uh, the birthday blessing, thank you for sharing. The birthday blessing is up on the screen. I invite you to say it with me. May the strength of God pilot you. May the power of God preserve you. May the wisdom of God instruct you. May the hand of God protect you. May the way of God direct you. May the shield of God guard you against the snares of evil and the temptations of the world. And may the Spirit of God bless you in the coming year. Know that whoever you are and wherever you may be on your journey in faith, you are invited to the Lord's table this morning.
my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears that laid him down. sitting or kneeling as you prefer, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, 
and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with James and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. This is the table of Jesus. It is prepared for those who love him and those who want to love him more. So come you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed. It is not I who invites you, but Christ the Lord, and it is his longing that you meet him here this day. The congregation may begin coming forward. Remember me, Remember me as you eat this bread.
Standing, sitting, or kneeling as you prefer, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Do not look forward to what might happen tomorrow. The same ever-loving God who is caring for you right now will care for you tomorrow and all your days. Either you will be shielded from any further suffering or you will be given the unfailing strength to bear it. Be at peace then and put aside all anxious thoughts and imaginations and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.